Then you can see I can walk and this thing is still in my screen. Then you go to a new chest, you press F and you drop it. Hey everyone, so I've been playing Power World for about a week now, non-stop. And there are many mistakes that I have made in my journey. And in this video, I'm going to let you know exactly what they are and how to avoid them. The first mistake that most players make is going to be related to this statue. You can craft it as well as find it in many places in the world. And as you can see, there are two options here. The first option is offering Lift Monk effigies to enhance your capture power. Now, this is incredibly powerful as it will make your balls have a much higher capture rate and will make you save a lot of time from farming the materials for the balls as well as just give you a good chance of catching some of the really hard piles in the game. And if you do not do this, some of the piles will be impossible to catch and they are usually the coolest and the rarest piles. So this is really something you should prioritize from the beginning. Now, the best way to do this is at night. As you can see, all of these green dots in my map all over there around and as this one right close to me, there are quite easy to find when you're looking at night. Of course, my mount is not making it the easiest, but you can see they're all over. So this is what it is going to be. You simply have to come and catch it, and I'm sure you've done it already, so it's not a very complex thing. You simply come close to it, and it gives you the Lift Monk effigy. And then once you have enough of them to come here again, you will be able to turn them in and increase your power using these guys. So this is really something you should be doing from the beginning. As soon as you see one, go out of your way to catch it because it is going to really enhance your power and make your game much easier. Next, the enhanced spell one is pretty similar. This is also something that is hard to find. You can see I have 47 of these. They are basically called uh, small pal souls. Here you can see them. There's also bigger ones of different sizes. This simply allows you to increase one of your pals stats. So HP, attack, defense and work speed. So this can be quite good. As you can see, the percentage is going quite high. So if I want to make this pal a really strong and really powerful pal for combat, you can just keep doing this. And as you can see, it's consuming some of them. And eventually it will require some harder ones. As you can see that I, there is like small ones, medium ones, and big ones, which I have six of. And you will be able to use them to enhance your pal at a point where it is so strong that it will do a lot for you. Now, if you are unhappy with this, you can also reset them. It will cost you gold, but you will be able to get them back in your inventory so that it is not wasted. Now, these little palaces are a lot harder to find, but here is what they look like. So there are these little blue and white thing. They're called small palaces. Obviously, there's different sizes and you can get them from a lot of stuff, including chests and some bosses. But in the world, you will find these kind of scattered randomly in no real area they're all over the map kind of like the green things but the difference with the green things is that these are much harder to spot but that means that when you see things on the ground you know often you'll see a blue thing this is usually just going to be crystals or pokeballs but these ones are the ones you are looking for and these are the ones you should be trying to see and find when you can the next mistake that i did was not catching 10 of every pals when i saw them so basically you can catch them up to 10 times and then they stop giving you XP or at least give a lot less. But the first 10 time you catch any pal, as you can see, I got an XP bonus of 1000 there. And this will work all the way to the 10 pals, which will also give you a good bonus. Uh, but after that, there is no point really in catching them other than for fun. Uh, but you really are going to be needing to catch as many of the pals 10 times as possible in the game because they really are going to be what gives you most of the experience. Now, a trick if you're high level is using this stun baton, which will allow you to basically not kill them and electrocute them, which will also make it easier to catch them when they electrocute it. As you can see, the percentage is like almost 100%. The last one was like 50. So this stun baton will allow you to do this much easier and uh, it will make it so that catching low level early powers is not something hard because obviously if you attack them, you'll kill them in one shot. So this is really something you should be trying to do. This will be the main brunt of your XP. And if you can do it from the beginning when you start in the zone, catch everything you see 10 times as much as you can, and you will really get a boost in XP and make your game much easier that way. Now, my next tip, which is a mistake that I have made personally, is when you are going to enhance your stats here, of course, you are going to be putting points in many places. As you can see, I've put six in stamina, five in attack, six in work speed. Now, from testing, we have found out that most of these generally become useless. My point being that your attack and defense are not very important because 
most spells will still really wreck you. You really do need to use spells in order to fight. And this really doesn't increase your damage by anything or much at all. It doesn't make your gun hit much harder uh, because the guns already don't hit that hard for some of the late game stuff. But also the correlation between the two is very low. It is much better to get a strong part and increase their attack to use them in combat than use these guns. These are these things to help you. Uh, but in any case, we also have found out that stamina is really useless for anything but yourself. And once you start traveling with pals, there is really no point in sprinting. This can be good for climbing, but wasting too many points in this is not valuable at all. Work speed is also something that kind of is wasted because your piles are doing most of the work for you. So the recommendation really is to put most of your points in weight so that you can carry things around and health so that you don't die instantly while your piles do the job. Everything else, you don't have to ignore it, but just don't waste too many points. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because there is a potion, the memory wiping medicine, that will allow you to reset all of your points, meaning that you can reassign your points here. But there is currently a very bad bug in the game that makes it so that when you do reset using the potion, all of your catching power that comes from the lift mug effigy that we talked about at the beginning of the video get reset, which means all the power that you've gained from farming these is erased from your character when you use this potion. It is a bug, it is not intended, but as of today, currently, it is still a bug in the game. And until they fix it, if you mess up your stats, there is no way to fix them without really screwing yourself over. So it is going to be important that you prioritize the ones that are really valuable for you in the long term, because as of now, there is no way to fix it. Now, my next tip that is related to mistakes I have made a, for a long time before realizing it will be about management of items and carrying stuff. First, one thing that I took a long time to realize is this button called Quick Stack, which is R key on keyboard and X for take all. Now, if you want to take everything, pressing X is fine. Uh, that works, but that's not usually what you want to do. Quick Stack, on the other hand, usually means that you will put everything in your inventory that is currently in this box at once. So I press R, boom. My wood and my stone automatically stacked on top of the existing one in the wooden chest. So this is not a huge tip, but this really helps a lot. Not knowing that this existed made me waste a lot of time dragging everything uh, and unloading all of your materials in chests that are pre-marked with the organization system, whatever you're using, will really make your life much easier. Now, the other really big tip is how to carry things like this. So obviously, if I take 999 of this, my weight is insane. I can't move at all. There is quite a few methods to do this. Now, many people will use something like the grappling hook, which allows you to basically move, uh, you know, wherever you're aiming. And here we go. Boom. And uh, obviously, I still can't move. But by using the grappling hook, I was able to move a little bit. So this can really help you move from one area to the other so that you can eventually reach a chest and be able to put all the items in it. Now, another way you can do it is simply dropping it on the ground, moving closer so you can open the chest and then clicking on it. Uh, then I'm not close enough. You drop it on the ground again and then you move closer and you drag it. Uh, so this is obviously one method and it is, you know, uh, a very unpleasant, but it works very well. But the best method of them all, which sadly only works on PC, it doesn't work on console. You open your chest, you grab everything you want and you hold it here. Then you press the tab key to close the chest. You never let go of holding it. And you can see I can walk and this thing is still in my screen. Then you go to a new chest, you press F and you drop it. As you can see, I have now dragged all of this. We'll do it again. You take this, you grab it here, you press tab to close this. And you just make sure you keep that thing clicked. You never let go of your mouse. Then you open this new thing and then you can simply drag it here and drag it here. So as you can see, uh, it is something that works quite well to transport infinite amounts of weight. Um, it's probably not as intended. It's probably a little bit of a bug, but I mean, in any case, it does work. So it doesn't matter where you want to go. Uh, the only thing that I've noticed is that it's better that you drop it in your inventory first and then you put it into the chest and that's it. You can now carry whatever you want in your base without any mistakes. Uh, so please don't take as long as I did to figure this stuff out. It will really change your life. Now, another mistake that I made is related to the technology point. As you can see, I basically started by unlocking everything. And while it's not a terrible thing to do, uh, technology points are not unlimited. You will eventually run out. So as you see, I have 24 points at level 42. And there is dozens and dozens of items that I haven't unlocked. Uh, so many saddles and stuff. So it is something that is limited. Now, there is a few ways to fix this. Of course, if you're playing with your friends, make sure that you guys don't get the same things that you don't need a lot of. 
for example, polymer is something you use a lot, but grenades and a snowman is something you don't really need everybody to know how to do, especially a snowman, you just really need one in your base. Uh, so these are the kind of things that, you know, it's best if not everybody gets them. Now, if you're playing by yourself, of course, you will want to get as many things as possible. But for example, there is, you know, a lot of guns that you might not need, you know, to create a makeshift handgun and then a handgun. You may need to be able to skip one of these or, for example, decorations and stuff are not a priority in the early game. Uh, but if you really want to get everything, there is a way to get infinite technology point and that will be through doing bosses and dungeons so bosses are usually the ones that have a circle around them like this in the map and these guys when you kill them the first time they give a lot of rewards now they respawn over and over about every hour so you can always come back and catch them and fight them but the first time you beat them so basically when there is no uh, defeated sign like this one you will get a lot of extra rewards from them sometimes that will include these technology point books that you can then use and gain more of these technology points and as well they will also be giving you these ancient technology so the first time you kill them they will allow you these points so i have 12 of them right now and these are the ones that unlock the really good stuff that you really need the incubator the speed bag the grappling guns this is amazing on the other hand there is also going to be a lot of dungeons in this game those are like these little holes in the wall that you can eventually press f and enter and these are dungeons that are kind of like randomly generated dungeons at the end of most dungeons you will find sometimes one or two of these bags that include these technology point uh books that you can learn and then use to get technology point so when you do see these kind of things make sure to go in and clear them uh, as much as you can you can farm them over and over by going into the same dungeon after a few hours every time because they reset and make sure to kill all of the uh, bosses like this that you haven't checkmarked, uh, you know, throughout the map as they really give you a lot of reward. Now, some of them are going to be hard to find. You'll be on top and you won't find it because they're in caverns that are like on the sides. And there's a lot of them. We have a full video showing you the location of every single one of these hidden bosses. So make sure to check it out if you need that. Now, another mistake that is something that many people I see making is... First, not getting a Gale Claw. A Gale Claw is this bird that is basically going to replace your glider. It just needs to be in your party. It doesn't need to be out. As you can see, I can be having my Jet Dragon out and still Gale Claw around and the Jet Dragon doesn't disappear. So this is one thing. The Gale Claw is also incredibly fast. As you can see, it gives me a big boost of movement speed as you summon it. So when you are traveling, you can simply just go around and do Gale Claw and then, you know, just walk like this. And then once you fall, you know, you just re Gale Claw again. And it's basically just bunny hopping with Gelka. This is an incredible pet and is the best glider of the entire game, in my opinion. Now, something even more amazing is in this game. Uh, I didn't figure this out for too long, to be honest. But if you are basically running off a hill and you press C, you can start going down incredibly fast. This gives you stupid momentum. And if you then do your Gelka or any glider, you gain most of that momentum in the speed, which goes faster than almost every flying mount in the game. So this is really the best way to travel. So I would not sleep on doing it. Anytime you see any kind of hill, you just do it and then you gain a bit of momentum and you will really travel this world much faster. And this is stuff you can do very early game because the Gale Claw is not something that is late game or hard to catch at all. Now, one of the most important mistake I see people do all the time is not doing the food system properly if you look in your base you can see that on the right side here there is a sanity right 99 out of 100 and then there's their food giving them food is good because it will make them do work and if they don't have it they will get injured but eventually you will see some of your pals will drop in sanity for example this one's at 85 and the lower it gets the uh, more useless they become and the more they have a chance of working less hurting themselves becoming basically uh, a useless pet and it's obviously not what you want in your base now the reason for that happening is people are not cooking their food people are going to come into these and put these ones red berries which have nutrition but absolutely nothing else same as wheat for example same as tomatoes same as lettuce so obviously as you can see this uh, feed box is very very terribly set up and this one as you can see the baked berries are giving one sanity so everything else is zero sanity this one is one sanity now on the other hand if you look at cooked food for example the cake which i wouldn't use to feed pets but you can see it gives 82 sanity as a cooked uh, item and many of the other items you can cook here all will give you know three four five six sanity depending on what they are and the lower 
on here the where they are the more sanity these are going to give so this is something very important you really should be cooking your food at all times now the best food in the game in my opinion are the jam filled buns or the bread because they give quite a bit of sanity and the ingredients are incredibly easy to get even just their regular berry when they're baked give one sanity and that is usually enough to do a good job the other part of this that is a mistake people do is obviously having the feed box empty means that when your piles are collecting as you can see berries and wheat they just come and stack it here which means that then your piles come and eat it they eat food that doesn't have a sanity restore and as you can see right now the example is perfect they're all storing all this food here and kind of ruining my life honey is one of those food that also has a sanity which is really good to give and has no expiration so in order to fix that the best way is to basically just split your stuff around so in this case, they will never be able to use this feed box to put anything else, obviously. And you do want the baked berries in here. You do want honey in here. If you don't, you can just put all baked berries. It doesn't matter. Just whatever you put in here, just make sure there's no empty space so that they don't come and put all your ingredients in here. The ingredients also will expire. So you don't want the ingredients to be in there. You would rather them to be in the fridge. So storing all of this stuff in the fridge is going to make them last longer as long as you have an ice pile. And it is just the best way to do so. So that way your feed box don't get flooded with all the random junk that your pets are putting in and you are going to have a much easier time doing that and not having to fight with your piles uh, for storage space. This is really uh, the best way to do so. So just make sure that you are using cooked food and that you are feeding your boxes uh, with things that you want them to use because otherwise, as I said, they will take this as storage instead of taking this as storage. So it will be the feed box that stores your food and that's done what you want. You want your uncooked food to be stored in the fridge. Uh, so this is the best way to do that. Now, my last tip is going to be about the ranch. This is what the ranch looks like. And this is something you unlock very, very early into the game. At level 5, you can unlock this ranch. Now, as you can see, in this ranch currently, I have uh, only this one. This one little uh, Vixie, which is very easy to catch. And this is what has been done in only like about an hour of me not being in the base. Like an hour or two of playing the game and... This is all stuff that this has created for free. Now, as you can see, uh, it's a lot of pal sphere. I've gotten 23 pal sphere and eight arrows from this. And this is just one Vixie alone doing this. Now, if you upgrade the Vixie by transferring them into uh, the incubator that makes them, you know, you'll put basically uh, up to 100 different Vixies and then they will make this Vixie's level go higher. They will produce uh, the green ball, the greater ones. Uh, but in any case, just using any of these pets, including the Vixie from the early game, will save you a ton of headache as they spawn these things for free. And these, at the beginning of the game, as you know, take a lot of time and effort to farm the materials and to craft. So this is such an easy way to have permanent farming of these things. You can do the same with, uh, for example, the cow, which will give you milk for crafting cakes and stuff, which you will need. And you can do the same as uh, this for the Melpaca, which will drop wool when assigned to ranch. And same as this one, uh, drop wool when assigned to ranch, which you need a lot in the early game. These ones will drop eggs. Uh, and so this is really where you can get a lot of value. Uh, you can see if it, they have this little farming, this is what uh, the ranch is. So this one will drop red berries, so you can endlessly farm red berries. And as we spoke about the Vixie, which drops random item when assigned to the ranch, as well as some other piles that will drop actual materials that are really important in the game. So just keep an lookout for that, especially in the early game. If you can use the ranch, it is literally just free spawning resources. Uh, even as you can see, this one is dropping honey. Uh, so there is really just a lot you can do with this building. And I feel it's very underutilized because of the value it can really bring your game and save you so much time and it's really just also fun to see them create so much stuff for free so this is about it guys of course there's many tips and things in this game you can do differently uh, and none of these mistakes if you do them will ruin your game but this is just some of the things you can do that really are going to make your uh, experience a much better one and uh, just make your game more fun if you have any other mistakes or suggestions make sure to drop in the comments and share with the others as well as make sure to check out our other videos for Power World, which include a guide on how to catch this bad boy, which comes with Zoe, as you can see on top of me, uh, and a lot of other tips that will make your game much more accessible and fun for you to play. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next video.